Hello friends, welcome to our channel. Before starting the video if you have not subscribed our channel till now then please subscribe it. And one more important thing if you have not watched our previous video then please watch it. In this video, we are going to discuss EH Cash. Before starting anything let's run and see everything is working fine or not. As per the last video, we enable second level cache with the help of Spring Boot Starter Cache. And see it's working fine. Now let's add EH Cache related stuff, so for that need to add EH Cache dependency in palm.xml file. We copied EH cache dependency, now let's put after Spring Boot starter cache. We don't need a version that's the beauty of Spring Boot. Till the time dependency is downloading, let's check it out what is EH cache. EH cache is an open source a standards-based cache that boosts performance, offloads your database, and simplifies scalability. It's the most widely used Java-based cache because it's robust, proven, full-featured, and integrates with other popular libraries and frameworks. EH cache scales from in-process caching, all the way to mixed in-process or out-of-process deployments with terabyte-sized caches. Let's check the sample format of ehcache.xml file. What is the use of ehcache.xml? Caches can be configured in ehcache either declaratively in XML, or by creating caches programmatically and specifying their parameters in the constructor. While both approaches are fully supported, it is generally a good idea to separate the cache configuration for runtime use. This time we will configure caches in ehcache.xml. Max entries local heap. The maximum number of cache entries or bytes a cache can use in local heap memory, or, when set at the cache manager level, max bytes local heap only, a local pool available to all caches under that cache manager. This setting is required for every cache or at the cache manager level. Time to live seconds. Here time to live seconds is 600. It means after 10 minutes it will be removed from the cache. Instead of 600, you can set any time period. So like that, you can create as many as caches with same or different configuration. Now you need to add some configuration in an application.properties file. like cache type and eh cache path where it locates. Ideally it should be on the class path. Let's first rename the config file to eh cache config. 
We don't need any code this class is just to enable and configure caching using annotation. If don't want to create a new class you can put same annotations in application.class file also. That's it. Let's rerun the application and see second level caching is happening or not with the help of EH cache. I clicked multiple time on the user list and see it's working as per the expectation, same way I am clicking on address list as well. Apart from cacheable let's check cache put and cache evix also is working or not. These all annotations I added in jcache video so if any confusion then please watch the video of jcache. See everything is working fine. Let's review whatever we added till now. As you can see it's pretty easy. I hope you like this video. You don't need to worry about the code, I will commit my code to a git repository. Code committed successfully. Let's open our git URL and under EH cache repository codes are available or not. See it's there. Thanks for watching this video. For more updates please subscribe our channel Mighty Java and press the bell icon to never miss the another update, because soon I am going to upload so many videos related to Spring Boot.